Good day to all of you. I am Dr. Suresh from GNH Hospital in Gurgaon in India. I would like to talk about very little about uh, dengue fever and the management of dengue. Actually, it's called dengue, dengue fever. How do we first diagnose it? Very simply, person comes with fever, aches and pains in the body, especially backbone fever. So it breaks, it gives you so much pain in the back that you have to mention it and you mention it and we come to know that there was severe pain in the back and the body and had a fever which could be with shivering, without shivering, without chill, with or without chill. But then once you see the fever, you have to test for two, three, four things. One is you do CBC, that is the blood test which tells us whether it is acute bacterial infection other than typhoid or a viral infection. The difference is that total white cell count increases in almost all the bacterial infections except for typhoid and for viral infections like dengue, chikungunya and also protozoal infection like malaria. So we must do CBC, we must do dengue, and we must do typhoid test and chikungunya and malaria test. Now the good and bad thing about these tests is that I'm talking about uh, antigen antibody tests which are quicker to come as positive and IgM we are looking at. IgG is a late stage finding but IgM is the quickest finding generally it takes one to four days to develop. Okay, I was interrupted, so I'll restart again. Uh, not restart, sorry, I'll start from the end where I finished. Um, when the typhoid antigen test, which is called typhoid test, if it is positive, that means typhoid is there. Just to tell you that within last month, I've seen many patients who had both typhoid and dengue. So we can't stop testing dengue at the same time because the management changes. Now the typhoid, typhoid takes one to four days to be positive. If you think with history that it is typhoid, then you've got to test it again after two days or three days again. Same you have to do for dengue. If that was negative, then you have to test it again after two days. Well, CBC will give you a hint that total white cell count starts getting down. Total count also starts getting down. Whereas platelets may also start getting down. Generally, they don't initially, but later on they can. And that depends upon dengue because um, I'll talk about dengue in a short, short while. So what it means is that we are trying to filter out which disease is the possible outcome. Let's say after two days we test dengue again, we must also test typhoid because if both are positive, then treatment line is different. Whereas if only dengue is positive and we think it's dengue only and we don't test the others, then the person can have dengue plus typhoid and in the end die because of the complications of typhoid. Now dengue is of two kinds. The common ones is um, non-hemorrhagic and the dangerous one is hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic means it causes bleeding inside the body, inside the body and that happens because of platelets getting down. Those people who are suffering from hemorrhagic dengue start getting low platelets from the beginning and it keeps on getting lower and lower. Generally we can misuse patients knowledge about these things by telling them, oh, your platelet count has come to 110, which is 110,000, 110, which is lower than the normal range. But actually it doesn't matter much. You have to serially test it, either every alternate day or every day, depending upon what the count initial was. If the initial count was, let's say 50, then you got to do it every day. But if the initial count was 110, you can do alternate day unless the patient's condition deteriorates. 
Now, simple things to do at home, if you haven't gone to the doctor yet, what I do, I'll tell you and the reasoning or logical reasoning behind that, I give high dose of vitamin C and high dose means two to three, two to three grams of vitamin C per day on a regular period. So that means every four hourly, uh, 500 milligrams or 1000 milligrams. What vitamin C does is by virtue of it, it being acidic, when it goes to the blood, it increases a fraction of the acidity of the blood till the circulation time of the blood, which is around five minutes. So it increases the acidity for about five minutes. And that five minutes is enough for the virus to die or get disturbed. So I have a feeling that once you give high dose of vitamin C, four times, three times a day, thousand milligrams, then the virus dies quickly. At the same time, you have to give any antipyretic, which can be paracetamol or whatever you like or your doctor likes. This needs to be done for five days, at least for vitamin C, but paracetamol I generally don't give more than two days because two days is to give relief to the person for two days. But third day we should not give to know whether the virus is still active or not. If the third day virus is still active or the fever is still high, either there is a different reason or the virus is dangerous one. So that's what we do. And different type means you still have to test for typhoid. The typhoid test you have to do and you may have to do chikungunya and you may have to do malaria test also at the same times. So you have to keep up with the fluids, plenty of fluids, plenty of salts, which means oral rehydration salt, ORS, can be used all day long without even going to the doctor. But if you are worried if the fever remains above 102, 101, you have to see the doctor and you have to question the doctor. You have to see what tests are to be done. Why are they done? Doctor has to explain it to you because that's our legal responsibility, moral responsibility, ethical responsibility. You name it, we've got that responsibility. And you have to ask and if the doctor doesn't want to answer, can't answer or shouts at you, you don't have to go to that doctor. You can go to another doctor. Thank you very much.